Hi there, it's Ingrid. Welcome back. This week we're going to work on a fun watercolor project. We're going to use the Whimsical Friends stamp set to create this cool project using the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. So to get started, I have a piece of Arches watercolor paper that I've cut down to a card front. And what I'm going to do first off is we're going to do a little bit of distress ink. So I took a circle die, and this is just, you know, just you know, take any circle die. You want it to be large enough. This is actually a size smaller. You want it to be large enough to cover your images. And we're gonna use these images here from the Whimsical Friends stamp set. So I'm gonna have those kind of on top of each other, but first I wanna mask off a circle. I'm gonna use this sentiment right here from the Whimsical Friends stamp set, but I'm gonna use this one from the birthday butterfly set and that's going to go below it. So I'm going to need a little bit of space there. So I'm going to think about where I'm going to position this. I'm also going to offset my circle. Now I've gone ahead and cut this out of some label paper. You can use post-it paper. You can use anything really. You just want to mask this off. Inkadoo has some masking paper as well that you can use. And I'm just gonna mask off my circle, just slightly offset. I don't wanna offset it too much because I wanna have this large circle here and I'm doing it somewhat in the center. Maybe it's just slightly offset to the bottom. And then first things first, we're gonna do a little bit of distressing with some distress inks. So to get started, we're gonna use two colors of distress ink. I have Broken China and Peacock Feathers. I'm gonna start with my lighter shade and I'm gonna try and keep it a little bit darker more towards the bottom and just kind of light as it goes outward up top. And I just want to have a little bit of a bright, vibrant kind of exterior to where we're gonna do some stamping and coloring. Almost like a little window. I'll get that all inked up. And we're just going to start on our mask and then just kind of work onto our paper here. Now I love to do this on watercolor paper because watercolor paper works so much better than regular cardstock. You just get this really flawless look. Really lends itself to distress blending really well. So now that you see me do this, I'm gonna speed this up as I add my other color, my peacock feathers. Keep in mind that it's actually going to be darker on the bottom. Now, as I'm going a little bit further outward, especially up top where I'm trying to keep it a little bit light still, I'm just going to just, with a real light hand, just go a little bit higher here. And this is with my lighter shade, the Broken China versus the Peacock Feathers, because the Peacock Feathers is a little bit more turquoise. So we're just keeping that nice and light. Now I like to come always back in with my lighter shade, just to really get a nice effortless blend. I'm just gonna come back a little bit more, a little firmer touch here around the circle, just to kind of accentuate that a little bit. And then, then again, a lighter touch. So depending on the amount of pressure that you apply, now I can apply a lot of pressure here, you can see this is getting quite compressed, or keep it nice and light. Nice and light as you go further out, and a little more compressed as you're right around where you need it to be darkest. So you can see here we have a nice dark shade, especially down here, and then much lighter as it radiates outward, almost kind of like the sun, but just blue. So now that we have this really cool background, I'm just gonna peel away my mask, and I can always save this and use this for something else another time. So I have this really great exposed circle here. And I'm gonna use some Ranger Archival ink. Now this is an acid-free permanent waterproof ink. So that's what I'm gonna stamp my image in. And I, just to note that my watercolor paper has two sides. It has a rough side and it also has a smooth side. We're gonna stamp on the smooth side. So I'm taking my elephant here. I'm gonna get him inked up rather well. And we're gonna stamp him here in the center, but a little bit more towards the top 
because I want my greeting to overlap a little bit. Maybe just a little bit to the right. I get a good impression. So give my ink a chance to transfer from the stamp to the watercolor paper, kind of get soaked in. And then I have my little bird, and my little bird, because he's going to be kind of overlapped here, up higher, we're going to stamp him on a piece of scrap paper, watercolor him, or her, <laughs> and then uh, cut, cut the bird out. Now there are a couple ways that you can watercolor. You can watercolor by putting your color onto your work surface and adding a little water to it and picking it up. That way you're going to get a lighter shade. Or you can go direct to your paper. Now I have two shades of blue here. I have light blue and cobalt blue. And I'm just going to bring in a line here of the lighter blue. We'll just kind of spread that out using our water brush. You can use a regular watercolor brush and some water as well. So I'm gonna come in here and just color in my entire image. I'm gonna do the beak. I'm gonna do all of it actually. And I'm gonna come back in with my darker brush and just kind of hit certain areas. You can kind of spread that around a little. You don't need to color everything. You don't have to be so crazy precise. And then I want to do the wing as well in the darker shade and the head. I'm just going to add a little in the corner and just blend it out from there. Now you could color this in any way you want. You could use different colors. I just wanted to kind of keep everything into this main tone. So I have my blue tones and then I'm gonna paint my elephant in grays and we're gonna do the little blanket in orange. And I think that I'm gonna actually come in with an even darker shade. I have some Persian blue just for the tails because the tails are gonna overlap my exterior and I would like to have a different color than this blue that I'm using right in the tail right now. Something that's a little bit brighter and you can see it's a nice mix of the two and that way it'll stand out a little bit more once we overlap it. And I think I'll bring in just a little bit of that, whatever's left on my brush here and just kind of blend it out. There we go. So we'll let that dry and then we'll cut it out. I'm gonna clean off my brush. And now we'll move into grays. And we'll start off with the lightest shade. I can all, this way if I'm starting with the lightest shade, I can always go darker. And I'm gonna speed this up so you can just kind of watch the watercolor process. At this point, I've been using the light gray, so I'm gonna introduce a darker gray just to get a little bit uh, more of a shadow on different parts of the elephant.
Now for the blanket, we're gonna do the top part in orange and then bring in scarlet red to the bottom. We're gonna blend those two together and the scarlet red really kind of started to overtake everything. So I ended up bringing in a little bit more orange to just kind of tone it down and maybe just get a real good mixture of the two colors. At the end, I ended up bringing in even more orange, just kind of leaving it darker in certain spots just to give the blanket a little bit more texture. To ground the elephant, I added a little bit of light gray and really kind of blended that out with using a lot of water. And then bringing in a grayish brown to kind of give it a little bit more of an earthy feel uh, as opposed to the cooler grays that we used for the elephant. This really helps to give our image a realistic look and a shadow. Here I'm adding some of that extra uh, orange color just in random spots and just kind of very lightly blending it out just to really give the tapestry a little bit more texture. So you can see here now that we've got our watercoloring done, I used a little bit of uh, some different shades of orange. I've got the regular orange and the scarlet red here which is kind of like an orangish red. And I used a little bit of the orange on the beak here and I don't need to worry about cutting out all the little teeny tiny parts because it's white on white or neutral watercolor paper on its own. And we're just gonna adhere that using some multi-medium here. This way if anything peeks out of the side, it's gonna dry clear. So we'll just add a little tiny bit to our bird because I want this to kind of just stay in, stay in place. Don't really want it to ooze out or kind of move too much. Just using some reverse tweezers to help get the perfect placement. Just want that to stay in place, not go anywhere. And now we'll just add our greeting. Now, as I said before, I want this to kind of overlap a little bit and just kind of be down here kind of going into the ground. I just kind of grounded my image a little bit, just kind of gives it a little bit more of a realistic feel to it. And then my friend will just place down even further, but more into the blue. Now being that this is watercolor paper, I always usually attach it with glue and I decided to mat it actually onto a dark gray base here. And that way I can have a little bit peeking out top and bottom, but glue is nice because you can kind of maneuver it to where you want it to be. And then I added a few sparkling clear sequins by Pretty Pink Posh. And I'm just really kind of looking to just kind of get this adhered down really well. And there you go. Really cute card, simple. You could do this with just about any image and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Definitely subscribe to our channel. We have a new video every week and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.